the heat starts to move over into the cold aisle, and then once these server fans catch that heat and pull it through the device, the device, the thermal mass of the device, gets a little hotter, so then it's putting more heat out, and, as, and here, that never happens. You have 68 degree air, keeping them at the most efficient temperatures they've ever read this gear at, of any site they have it in. You can see it's, it's actually not really that warm here. If this kind of capacity was running anywhere else you guys have been, the hot aisle would be unbearable. It would be 108 degrees, but the cold aisles would be 80, 90 degrees. Here we're 68 degrees in the cold aisle, and even with you know almost 1,500 watts a square foot of density in this space, the heat in this aisle is only 92 degrees, right at the output, and already by the ceiling it's only 81. Guys, this is just what's going on. Every new piece of gear that comes out is just running hotter and hotter. And see how the see how the tops of this is so open. You know, think of if you had pressurized water, like you were talking about, with some running in here in a plumbing line, and that leaked and started to spray. Would it be contained? No, it absolutely dripped down and wrecked this two million dollar device. I mean, I, I think that's a path that is going to be really scary for a lot of these guys to move down. Pressurized, you know, to try to do a plumbing line in every rack and go, it's never going to leak. Of course, like I said, guys, if you've done plumbing at all in your life, you know that over time, plumbing leaks. And so what happens is that heat ceiling is open. And all the heat's moving up through the thermal skiffs and is trapped up in the heat ceiling. And then it's open into this heat aisle. So the heat comes over, falls into the heat aisle, the lever's plugged in backwards and then sealed. Yeah. And so it's pulling air, but it's only pulling the hot air in the room. Right. Rather than normally it would be the other way around and would be pulling this air, like I said, on the coldest part of the room. What's amazing though, guys, is that right now in this hot aisle, it's only 80 degrees. I mean, it's 107 outside. It's only 80 degrees in the data center. We're running the highest densities in the world. And part of why that's occurring is, you know, we talked with Sun and work with all these guys, is that they're going, Rob, because you're keeping, you're able to keep the data center at 68 degrees, none of the gear is ever reaching its maximum heat. It's not putting out the heat, so you have to really, in a sense, combat it and process it, move it out. So if we ended up, guys, where, you know, designed all this going, hey, this is gonna be way better, and really it's ended up being, as it's a couple hundred percent more efficient than even I thought when I started the design, once we put it into practice. I mean, it really works well when you don't let the heat blend at all. Can you say one thing really quick about why, why couldn't you scale this with just these off-the-shelf units to Superdack? Well, so here guys, so you know, when you look at these units right here, so along this aisle, I think we have, well, let's say there's 10, I think there's only nine. So there's 10 of these units and they take up this space and of course they're taking up floor space in the building. These can't go outside, you know, they're not made for that. Well of course, 10 of these units still doesn't do the cooling of just one of our other ones. You know, and then of course you have to have water in the building. Now, one of the other advantages we have with building these containment aisles is these aisles drain. So if this ever leaked, you're only leaking water in a separate aisle that would drain out of the building. Of course in the SuperNAP, there is no water in the building. There isn't one plumbing line in the facility that would ever affect the data center.